Hey everyone, this is Ben, and thank you for joining us on this episode of the Semper Gumby channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be doing a little bit something different besides camping or gear or outdoor. We're gonna be talking about some things that, you know, as a content creator or as a YouTuber, which some people call it, or being on social media, um, when you put yourself out there, um, sometimes you get what we call haters or negative comments or um, people judge you or judge things uh, while you're on the internet. So today, um, that's what this episode is going to be about. People who judge uh, or people who hate and we're going to talk about that for a little bit. So let's go check out some of the YouTube haters. And, uh, and then we're gonna talk about some of the, the great people as well, um, as far as our subscribers. So when we're talking about being a content creator or creating a channel on YouTube or being on a social media platform, uh, sometimes you run across individuals or people that what we call trolls or keyboard warriors or uh, people who judge you for, um, and they don't even know you. And you know, that's some of the things that you have to expect when being on, on, on social media or on YouTube. Now, there are also some really great folks uh, that are on YouTube. And with my subscribers, I have met tons of people out there. You know, my subscribers, they have come up to me, uh, thanking me, uh, they come up, you know, uh, at these expos. I have quite a bit of supporters, not only on YouTube, but Facebook and also Instagram. You know, I truly believe that, you know, sometimes you have to stand up to these people because a lot of these folks take advantage of individuals. And a lot of people just kind of blow it off and go on with their life and, and they, they never stand up for it, you know? And so I just think that's wrong. and. Judging people before you even meet them or bashing them is just totally unacceptable. And, um, but we're going to, you know, cover that here in just a little bit. And I had an experience this past week where I was, uh, I had, I was able to engage with two individuals from a company that's located in Texas. Now, I won't, I won't say the name uh, of the company, but I can tell you it's located in North Texas. And if you want to find out more about the company, feel free to come up to me, PM me, direct message, private message, or even call me. And I'll be happy to discuss the, the, the little uh, incident that we had. Well, during this interaction, it was sort of, you know, it was like an interview and it was a, it was recorded live um, as far as like a Zoom meeting. And the Zoom meetings that are recorded um, have a transcript that is attached to it. So uh, the, the position was for an operations uh, manager or in the operations department. And uh, the interview or the you know, interaction started with the, the two individuals, which I won't name. Um, but both of them uh, started talking about um, my YouTube channel. And I found that fairly weird because the position had nothing to do with my YouTube channel. But, you know, I gave it the benefit of the doubt and I didn't want to be rude. And so I answered the questions uh, from that. Um, you know, the, it went on for about 30 minutes and I got a weird feeling from one of the, the interviewers. Um, I, you know, I read people for a living. I've been doing, you know, this for 30 some -what years as far as a law enforcement officer and as well as um, in the United States Coast Guard. Well, um, one of the comments that was made that I had no experience in the operations field, and uh, many of you know my background, 
Um, you know, I've worked for the U.S. embassies um, that traveled across the world, um, training and working in operations with many of the other countries across the world, um, going on MTT missions, providing training as far as, well, I can't go into detail, but uh, working for these embassies, uh, also working with the United States Coast Guard as far as search and rescue operations across the Pacific, uh, both uh, also in maritime law enforcement. So um, I was kind of I was kind of blown away when, you know, I, I read the comments saying that I had no experience in operations. Also, being a uh, law enforcement officer in South Carolina um, as a two different agencies, one agency with over 200 officers. Now, as an operations sergeant at one of the uh, local police departments, um, you know, I was not only engaged in the community uh, events, I was also engaged with both of the shifts and you know as an operations sergeant you know your biggest biggest responsibility is legality and civil responsibility for the city you don't want the city to get sued or your officers to get hurt and that's way bigger liability and responsibility than building a structure or a bathroom or anything like that. So anyway, let's get off that subject. But when she said that I had no experience in operations, um, I kind of, in the back of my mind saying, you, you know, obviously you just glanced over uh, the resume. But, um, so we fast forwarded this a little bit through it. We got done with the, the conversations and by mistake, um, they continued to talk about the follow-up of this conversation. And I guess they mistakenly sent me or emailed me the notes or the conversation they had with each other. I read the transcripts and I was just floored, blown away by some of the comments that was on there because um, I'm going to read one of them to you and um, and you guys just uh, hear this out. So one of the interviewers, she said, uh, so I know I watched several of his videos and I was bored. Well, the position had nothing to do with my YouTube channel. Again, so I know I watched several of his videos and I was bored. So that's telling me that you already made up your mind or had a preconception uh, of me before we got together and talked for this. Uh, um, so coming into this conversation we all had, you already saying, oh, you were bored. Uh, you didn't like my videos. So right there, I was already pushed. Uh, I felt that I was pushed uh, towards the back. You know, I thought, I, the position had nothing to do with my videos. Um, so I found, you know, like I said, I found that pretty, pretty weird. And, you know, reading all those comments, you know, I was like, you know, I'm used to hearing negative stuff, but this was at a different level. Um, the other interviewer said, uh, she wrote, no, not at all. And I don't even think any, we should even suggest him for marketing. I didn't apply for a marketing position. To be honest, I was listening to his answer. Yeah, he can get brand deals. Now we're talking about as a brand ambassador. You know, many of you know I'm a brand ambassador with several companies. Yeah, he can get brand deals and things like that, but he's not real. How in the hell can you sit behind there and, and, and judge me and say that I'm not real? That's kind of a bullshit comment, if you ask me. I work with a lot of companies, Blue Eddy, um, Oxbeam, Devos Outdoors, Mamu's Camp Kitchen, um, Bouge RV, uh, tiny camper companies. We're talking big name companies. This camper right here, this camper um, 
from Tiny Camper Company. You know, I collaborated with Joe uh, out in Florida. Bouge RV, I'm on their website and their commercials with my videos. And then my latest uh, uh, sponsor, Inspired Overland, and that's what I got up, up up here on the roof. They're a company out of California. Uh, they go they go to SEMA every year. They have won four awards with their products, uh, four. And they're very selective who they take on as their brand ambassador, you know. And saying that I'm not real is a bunch of, like I said, BS. And for you to just come out and say that is very unprofessional and I am appalled by it because I work hard with these companies and you just don't get the product. You know, I'm representing these companies 24, 24 seven, you know, and I go to these expos, I represent them and I meet people, I talk to folks out there. So for you to say that I'm not real, you know, obviously you have a lot to learn about. And um, so, you know, that went on for a little bit and then I read, kept going down in the comments section and then I read, uh, you know, said that I was pretty super, he was just super persistent. Well, the first meeting or the first interview uh, went on and I didn't hear anything back for about, I think a month went by and most, I would say most responsible or people that work in human resources or anything like that, if the position was filled or you would say, hey, thank you for uh, interviewing with us, but we decided to move on with another uh, applicant or we are, you know, we have filled the position. Nothing. Four months or four weeks went by, nothing. So as a applicant, I called to see if it was filled. Well, you know, I text the owner of the company to see if it was filled and he said he would get back with her she never get the only time she would get back with me is after i would text the owner so one that's telling me she could care less about you know me um, applying for it so all these things that were leading up into this position um i'm kind of glad that i was finding it out i did hear um I did hear folks' comments that have been to this place and told me, hey, about this individual, but I gave it the benefit of the doubt. But uh, as the time frame went on, I started to believe more and started to see the light of this uh, come forward. So after I read all those comments, I, I text the the owner and let them know how I felt, how I'm professional. It was how I got the transcripts. And then 30 minutes later, I received two emails from these two individuals who were involved. And the first one said, I want to sincerely apologize for the unintentional sharing of our internal notes. While feedback is an important part of the interview process, I understand how the manner in which those comments were shared and to be perceived as unprofessional. Also, I recognize some of our questions, particularly those related to your channel, may have seemed irrelevant to the position you were applying for. However, we were considering other positions we have as well. Well, if you were doing that, uh, it would have been nice to have brought it up at the beginning of the conversation uh, and not even bring it up at all. Now, it was never my intention to hurt or diminish you in any way, and I fully understand how painful those words must have been to read. And yes, it was, because not only you are uh, diminishing me, my channel, and my credibility, but also to my sponsors. And then it goes on to say, know that this was a mistake in our part, and I deeply regret how it unfolded. Please accept my heartfelt apology and ask for forgiveness. Okay, well, uh, she signed it her name, but no, I will not accept your apology and I not will forgive you. Um, I'm a pretty forgiving person and I am a very, I accept apologies and I do a lot of stuff for the public. I do a lot of stuff for friends and family um, and I would give my shirt off my back. But as far as this incident, no, 
I will not accept your apology and I not will forgive you because I feel or I know for a fact that going into this whole process, um, I was already um, judged prior to the uh, second, um, the second actually meeting. And the only way the meeting had happened is because I had texted the owner and asked about the uh, position. If I had never done that, I would probably never had heard from the person again. And then the second person wrote, I concur with the end of, you know, this person individual words and offer my apology as well. It was never intentional to hurt feelings. However, I understand my question and comment may have seemed irrelevant and distraction or distracting, which it is. Uh, you came recommended and your resume is impressive, although it's not detailed in operations. Um, so they admit that the, uh, the way it went was not how it was supposed to go. Um, but I don't forgive or I don't accept her apology as well. And, you know, I know of her. Um, I know, you know, as a, a, a LEL, you know, I do my research and I know their backgrounds. I know, you know, um, sometimes certain individuals feel, I would say, entitled because of spouse's positions in the past. So in general, in that, in that situation, I'm glad that I did not, uh, I did not uh, pursue this. And like I said, if you guys wanna know the name of the place and the people that was involved, I'll be happy to tell you, just give me a call. Or if you see me, I'll be happy, but I'm not gonna put them on blast on here uh, because I, you know, I had no problem with the, the owner of the company. Um, we do have some mutual friends, but the whole thing that it, it the way it went about, it was kind of borderline, uh, like borderline discrimination uh, because they were, I was judge prior, judge prior, judge prior, judge prior the interview or the meeting. So, we'll go. so if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, you know, you gotta be transparent sometimes. Up here, Hoku. <laughs> okay, um, you know, be prepared. There's a there's a lot of good uh, people out there, and there's a lot of bad and negative folks out there as well. But uh, you know, the good outweigh the bad, and I look at that. Um, like I said, I've met some really great folks. I've made some really great friends. Um, I've lost some friends from uh, YouTube. You know, there's been some communication sometimes that's been you know, taken the wrong way, but you know, a really lot of good friends I've met along the way. In fact, a lot of the friends that I've, you know, hang out with now have come from YouTube and they're sort of like a second family. Um, and they're, I can depend on them because if I need something, they're there at, at a drop of a dime. But, you know, think about that. Um, you know, it's not about making a video filming it, editing it, put it on YouTube, and expect it to go viral. Now, there are some videos that will do that, um, and if you're looking to make a living on YouTube, it takes a lot of work, a lot of years, and you know, don't expect to be a, you know, a millionaire right off the bat. I know people that have channels for 14, 15 years and still working hard at it. So, anyway, that's kind of a, talking about some, you know, YouTube haters, channel haters, you know, and like I said, you know, they have, people have the right to, to, to say what they want in the comment section, but uh, this was just a little overview of what my week was like uh, dealing with uh, two individuals that, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, highly of uh, because of the way they handled this situation, but, Anyway, um, comment in the box below. Tell me what you think about this whole situation. Um, but we are getting ready uh, for the Gumby gathering. And like I said, we know we are giving back the YouTube 
channels are giving back uh, to our subscribers and uh, um, that's part of the engagement uh, back to our community and back to our subscribers to come hang out in our camping trip uh, here in about a week. I want to say uh, thank you to all my sponsors. Um, you know, I mentioned them here earlier and I want to send a heartfelt uh, prayers to all the folks in East Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, and in Florida. Uh, North Carolina and East Tennessee was hit very hard. Um, Chimney Rock area, Asheville has been washed. I mean, Chimney Rock is completely gone. The dams have been broken. I-40, uh, Interstate 40 has been damaged. People are trapped. People were rescued from rooftops, flooding. Um, it's going to take a while for that place to rebuild. So my hearts and prayers are with you all in the Southeast. Um, I hope uh, you guys stay safe. And until the next video, this is Semper Gumby out.